Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. The British Touring Cars are returning from their summer break this weekend with round 6 at Croft. And I have to say, 2023 has been the worst year in the modern history of the BTCC. I don't know what it is. I have been bored to tears by almost every race so far in 2023. For some context, I have been watching the BTCC since the early 90s. My first memory of watching it was in 1994 at Fruxton when I was there. My mum brought me a Renault hat. I have watched every race since and a fair few before, so I decided to investigate what has happened to the BTCC. Why has it got so bad recently? Make sure you subscribe and leave your own thoughts down below. And with that, let's jump into the video. I think it goes without saying that nostalgia plays a huge part in this. It doesn't help that I'm nostalgic for a time in British touring car history that featured some of the best racing in any category of motorsport in any era. The super touring period of the 90s was by far and away the greatest age of BTCC. I would say it's almost unanimous by people who live through it or has discovered it since. So putting nostalgia aside, what has gone wrong with the BTCC? Well, the BTCC has gone through dark periods before. 1990 saw the beginning of the end to the multiple class system and the Ford Sierra Cosworths in class A seemed like dinosaurs. Incredibly exciting dinosaurs, but the two litre class was showing what the next era of the BTCC was going to look like. BMW vs Vauxhall set up the future nicely, and there was plenty of enjoyable racing throughout the year. 2001 was also pretty bad. This was the end of the Super Touring era and only Vauxhall and Peugeot remained, with MG joining the fun later in the year. A Vauxhall won every single race in 2001, even the MG win for Anthony Reid didn't actually count as they were not eligible to score points. Peugeot couldn't get close to a win, even with touring car legend Steve Soper, whose career was ended in a massive crash at the final round. Alfa Romeo and Lexus turned up sporadically throughout the year, but had little impact. The production class was a dumb idea too and no attention was ever really given to it, except when someone crashed and brief looks at the leaders. But even with five manufacturers in the field and only two at some races, I have to say 2001 was more entertaining than 2023 has been with its seven different teams. It's not the NGTC regulations either, they have existed for the last 13 years. Aerodynamics don't play as big a part here as they do in other series. Hence why Toyota can be mildly competitive with a hatchback compared to the more streamlined looking BMWs. I don't like the hybrid system. I don't know why they've made it more complicated than a Formula E race. I almost miss attack modes. Almost. Having a certain amount of hybrid to use over a certain amount of laps that differs depending on the previous race's results is a system that only works for people who really like using an abacus. For the rest of us, it's hard to follow. It doesn't have any on-track visual appeal and why wouldn't you just use a normal push to pass system? It has taken the place of a ballast being added to the most successful cars and I feel this has had an effect. The hybrid system in place doesn't bring the best drivers back to the field in the same way an extra 60 kilograms of weight would. The ballast system worked for years and whilst it did punish drivers for being successful it made it difficult for any one driver to want a ray with the championship. You need another 60 kilograms to slow Ash Sutton down the hybrid system just doesn't work as well. Ash Sutton is good enough to get a gap large enough so that the hybrid doesn't have an effect. If we really have to have a hybrid gimmick involved, push to pass with seconds counting down that's easy to follow on screen and a flashing light on the car as a visual aid to fans. The drivers involved in this series are a lot weaker than in previous years as well. Let's go back to 1993 and see who was racing in the BTCC. You had previously mentioned touring car legend Steve Soper with former Formula 1 driver Joachim Winkelhock. Series stalwarts such as John Clellan, Jeff Allen, Andy Rouse, Rob Gravitt, reigning champion Tim Harvey and a young Alan Menu who was jumping over from International F3000 and DTM. Another former Formula 1 driver in Julian Bailey, New Zealand Grand Prix winner Paul Radisic and of course Patrick Watts. It's not just an exciting field of talent, it's an international field in a variety of cars and a wealth of different talent and experience levels. In 2023, you have former champions such as Colin Turkington, Ash Sutton and Tom Ingram, some decent drivers like Dan Kamish, Josh Cook, Jake Hill, Rory Butcher and maybe Adam Morgan, none of whom have had any real success outside of the BTCC. Everyone else would be a backmarker and a dash for the bargains at Tesco's. The 2023 field is exceptionally weak, so much dead weight 
And the only international drivers are Aaron Taylor-Smith, who is from the far away lands of the Republic of Ireland, and Daryl De Leon, who hasn't even debuted yet. The levels of the drivers have made the BTC what it should be, one of the most prestigious touring car series in the world. But the class of 2023 is the most forgettable field in a series history. I will remember BTCC nobodies like Hamish Irvine and Colin Galley before I remember Jack Butel. Jade Edwards couldn't touch Netum Lingram. Nick Hamilton is subpar for Rick Harriman. The last driver to have raced in both Formula 1 and the BTCC was Mark Blundell, and he may be the last unless Lewis Hamilton gets a head injury and wakes up one day thinking he's Luke Hines. Or maybe Lando Norris will lose a bet. I just don't see it happening somehow. The drivers aren't the only thing I would like to change. The BTCC has had the same calendar since Rockingham closed down, so it only changed because it didn't have a choice. I don't know what it would take to get a Goodwood, Castle Coombe or Lydon Hill on the calendar. Maybe the tracks themselves need some renovating. Hell, I'd love to see another street circuit. Bring back the Birmingham Super Prix. Or if we're talking relics of the late 80s, why not the one-hour endurance race? Damon Hill and David Coulthard both raced in that. Why not have an international race? I know it's expensive to transport the cars, but British GT and GP3 still manage it. BTCC at Monza? I'd like to see it happen at least once. Now that I've finished my little moan, let me know what you think. What would you change? Or do you think the 2023 season is one of the best in the history of the BTCC? Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and have a good one.